Hi everyone, welcome to In His Love. How is everybody doing? Awesome, awesome, great. I'm doing wonderful over here. I just bless God. And um, we're just going to dive into our topic today. And before I do that, I just want to say thank you, Father, for your goodness, your mercies over us. Thank you, Lord, as we go into this topic, as we discuss with each other, Lord, we ask for your understanding. We ask, Lord, for your spirit to come, help us, dwell in us, and give us a deeper understanding of what you are trying to say to us. Let everyone be blessed. Let everyone learn something from this. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So today... Um, <clears throat> It's so much, so much happening on social media, you know, on the internet with African pastors, Nigeria, you know, and other African uh, pastors and churches too. So many things happening, you know, but I, I, I watch a lot about Nigeria because that's, that's where I'm originally from, as many of us know. Uh, before I continue, uh, thank you. If this is your first time coming, you're welcome. Thank you, my returning viewers. Thank you for viewing. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, like the video. Share it out to someone if, he, if it blesses you. Share it out to someone else to help someone out there. You know. All right. So, there's so many things going on on social media these um, days, you know. Uh... You know, uh, Nigerian, African pastors, men of God, quotes, um, they've really failed God in so many ways. They've really, really failed God, you know. And I'm saying this, you know, from the scripture, you know, from my knowledge from the scripture. There are, there are so many out there, so many of them lately that we've been listening to. Uh, I'm not going to mention names for now. You know, I just don't feel like doing that right now. But there are so many out there that are sleeping around with, with women, married, unmarried, and they come right to the pulpit and they're still preaching, you know, still gathering crowds. What's going on? I wonder what's going on. It's, it's, it's just amazing. You know, some are stealing money, if not all of them. You know, of course, there's the, the, there, are, there are a handful still left that are preaching the, the gospel. But so many of them out there, they are just running businesses. Church, African church is a business uh, affair. I'm sorry to say, but it's the truth. I mean, look at it. All they talk about is money, money, money. You know, some out there are stealing money and hiding in other countries. Which money do? Your tithes and offerings, your seeds, your sowings, and all of all of that. Why you are getting poor and poor? Why the people are getting poor and poor every day? These men of God are getting richer and richer by the day. What's going on? What is going on? Look at Nigeria. Look at the country. Everything is messed up. There's no security. Everything is just messed up. But the, the pastors are proud to say, you know, that um, they are worth $200 billion. They are worth, you know, a country where we have the richest pastors, but the people are so poor. It's crazy. It's just crazy. So anyway, today I want to talk, I want to give out to Christians out there, you know. Many of us are still in these churches. I've, I've, got, I've been left, like, I'm done with African churches. I'm just done with them, you know. Because they've turned Christianity upside down. It's, now it's all about religion. It's all about religion, just practicing religion. There's no love. There's nothing going on. So I'm going to give us um, red flags. Red flags. I, I call it red flags in our churches today. That you will see or look out for or watch out for 
is sensitive. First of all, when you go to church, don't leave your brain behind. Take your brain with you. And when I say that, it's not, it's not like a, a disrespect, but it's, it's, it's just saying that you should take your brain with you inside the church so you can think. And that's what God expects you and I to do. It's, God said, let us reason together. You know, let us reason together. Not just you and God reasoning together. You and the people around you. You and the brethren around you. You and whoever you are with. Let us reason together. Think. God wants us to think. God wants you to think. Don't just swallow everything you hear. So today I'm going to quickly just uh, give red flags that you as a Christian, you as a truth lover, you as a lover of Christ Jesus should watch out for it. If you are still out there, you know, if you are attending any of these churches, you know, sometimes a lot of us have no idea, you know, it's, this is what we've, we've grown up uh, to know as church. This is what we've been doing for decades. How are we supposed to know what's right and what's wrong? Well, I'll give you some red flags. Number one, red flags. When you go to a church, especially African churches, and their emphasis is on money, emphasis on money. That's, a, that's number one red flag. All they talk about is, is about money, sowing, giving, just all kinds of giving. Name it. They emphasize it when they emphasize it so much. That's, that's religion. That's not Christianity. That is not the right church. Number two, when emphasis is, are on miracles and testimonies. Look at our African churches today. It's all about miracles, testimonies. In fact, it's so big. It's so big. That section of the service is, is so big. You know, and they come up with testimonies, you know. Uh, they read some, some read up testimonies for you. They say uh, documented testimonies. And they read it for you and you jump and clap and give glory to God. But where are the people that these testimonies actually happen to. Why can't they come out and give their own testimonies with their own mouth? Why can't they do a video and then they play it or something? You know, they, they, <laughs> they claim, I'm sorry, my light. They claim to, um, to say, okay, they're saving up uh, time. You know, people may not be able to uh, reduce their time when testifying. Then take one or two testimony each service, you know? But, you know, ask questions. Ask questions. Think with your head. Don't just swallow every testimony. Somebody just come. What is the evidence that that testimony really happened? Who knows the person that it happened to? Was it documented? Was it in the newspaper? Was it, you know, where, where is the evidence? They come and just make up stories and, and tell you as testimonies and you swallow it. So, uh, churches, African churches that are big on testimonies, and miracles, the emphasis on miracles. What is God going to do for you? God can do this for you. God can do that for you. It's all about what God will do for you. Well, I'm sorry to uh, shock you that God expects you and I to, to walk, to walk, go out and walk. They even tell you stuff of uh, stuff like things like a destiny helper. What is that? Destiny helper. So someone, God, someone's just kept one place to help you, you know, to, to, to give you everything you need to, to make your life whole one day. One day of favor is greater than many years of hard labor. Lies. Lies that they've told us. So when you go to a church and it's all about miracles, they are telling you about all the miracles you can get from God or testimonies up and down, especially the ones you don't even see the people that had the testimony, think, think, you are in a wrong church. Number three, prophecies. I did a video about prophecies. Go to my uh, page and go to my channel and, and scroll down. you see it. And I did a video titled, What is this madness about prophecy? Prophecy madness. It's crazy in our African church. Every 
every church is it's all about prophecy now people cannot even wake up in the morning and, and dress up and go to work there, there, there has to be a prophecy for that the, 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 our churches have turned to madness prophesy prophesy man of God prophesy man of God I see this I see that it's only the man of God that is saying you yourself can't you see of course you can see you can see when you pray and you ask God even if you don't if even 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 sometimes most times or you don't even need to see what are you seeing God has equipped you with everything Everything that you need to, to be a success here on earth, to take care of the earth, to take care, to, you know, to dominate the earth. He has equipped you because when he made you, he said, he, he looked back and said that, that you are very good. You and I are very good. He, so he has equipped you and he said, go and multiply, replenish the earth. So what other prophecy are we, are, are, are we looking for? That we align all these men of God to, to say all kind of things and mesmerize us. And, and, and at the end of the day, it's like we can't do anything without prophecy again. So big one is emphasis on prophecy. In fact, I, I don't know any Nigerian church that do not prophesy. I don't know anyone, any African church that, that they don't prophesy. That prophesying, prophecy, I'm sorry, is not big. Red flag. Red flag number, where am I? Number four. No questioning. You are not allow, allowed to ask questions. How can you not ask questions when God gave you a brain to think? When God gave you a mind to think? You know, asking questions just like children when they ask questions because they don't understand something. They want to know. That's why they ask, you know. And then now we as, as, as adults, because we're so we're in the church, and automatically we, you're not allowed to ask questions. Even when you ask, they look at you. <coughs> they term you as disrespectful. Excuse me. They term you as disrespectful when you ask questions. Red flag. That is not the plan of God for your life. The plan of God for your life is not for you to stay and 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 make your dream and make your brain all covered with dust and you don't even use it at all to think you just take everything they tell you to do in so-called instruction this is the instruction of god when you go back go to your own bible when you get home and check out those instructions that they are giving you does it align with the word of god and if it aligns with the word of god does it align with the words of jesus christ who is our new covenant who whom we are supposed to be following not the laws of Moses anymore. So questioning, they don't allow you to question is a big red, red flag. The next one is they use mediums. They use mediums. They use all kinds of things. Huh? Name it. Hey, what, what have they not used? My God, or still using their, uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, anointing water, anointing oil, hand cashews, uh, flyers, uh, stickers, all kind of things. Uh, 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 in, in, you know, they have packages of whatever, their soap, their salt, their, all kind of things. Those things are, in, in fact, oh my God. When you practice that as a Christian, what are you, act, what, what, what are you saying to God? That you don't believe in the name of Jesus alone. You need to have something physical. Then you're practicing paganism. You're practicing paganism. Because, you know, it's like, <clears throat> you know, um, when you go to see a, 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 a herbalist or a witch doctor or a babalawo, if some of us understand, they all mean the same thing. You know, you go and you tell him your, your problem and he makes incantations uh, and then give you something to take home with. Now we, now we go to church to pray and, and they pray on anchorship, they pray on all these mediums and give to us to take home and use and strike our home, strike everywhere in our home, uh, put it in your car and take it for your interview, all kind of things. 
Some even give you comb to comb away poverty, take it wherever you are. That when you're going for that interview, comb your hair is paganism, my people. Paganism in the in the house of God. Paganism in the church of God. If Jesus was still here, I'm sure what he wants to do is turn all the tables of all these mediums and all this paganism going on in, 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 in the church, in his church, and just turn all the tables and whip everybody like he did before. But guess what? God expects you and I to do that. That's why I'm speaking. I speak because I have been set free and I cannot leave my fellow human beings, my fellow Christians, to still be in bondage. So these are six, six um, red flags I gave us today. I'll come back tomorrow again and continue more uh, red flags for you. So brethren, sister, my, my brothers and sisters, pay attention. Read your Bible for yourself. Pray to God for yourself. Ask God any question you want to ask him by yourself. Wait for the answer. Study whatever you've been taught in church. Take it home. Go and review it. Go and review. Even Paul told, told um, the people in the Bible, said, you know, even if whatever, even I that I am teaching you, ask me questions, review it. Be like the Berean Christians. Go and review if it matches the words of Jesus Christ. Not just the Old Testament, the words of Jesus Christ. Because he is our new covenant. He is grace. And we, are, we live in grace. We walk in grace now. Not in works. Thank you all for listening. Uh, I'll see you soon on the next video. Please like, share, subscribe. And as always... Know that you are in his love, the love of Christ. Don't let anybody t tell you different. Don't let anybody bring you down. Don't let any pastor bring you low. You are made more than a conqueror in Christ, in his love. God bless you. Bye.